Hello friends, Tattooed Biker here with you, and welcome back to the place to hear real, unexplained encounters and experiences submitted by real people. Tonight I bring you four true stories of encounters with Bigfoot or Sasquatch, and on a narrator's note, you don't want to miss the last one. It's really not like any Bigfoot encounter I've heard before, and I just had to include it. I'm excited to read your theories about it in the comments. Well, enough of my blather. So strap on your boots, and let's ride to Bigfoot country. Number one. Hey, biker. I have a few Bigfoot experiences that I'd like to share with you. The first time I had a brush with Sasquatch, I was just a little boy. You see, I was 11 years old, and my younger brothers, cousins, friends, and I were outside playing with a kite. It was March, so it was still a bit cold. My cousin, who was looking down the road, said, Who's that guy watching us over there? We all looked, and we were like, we didn't know who it was, but whatever, or whoever it was, he was really, really big. He was taller than our little fence pole, which came up to him about mid-chest. The fence pole, we later found out, was about five feet something. He also looked hairy. He had no neck and really long arms. He watched us, and every now and then, he'd lean over. And then he'd stand back up and watch us some more. We quickly pulled back our kite. Then it started to snow. One of my little brothers said, I'm going to go tell Dad. The hairy man then turned and ran into the trees, so he disappeared in like the blink of an eye. Back then, we had never even heard of Sasquatch or Bigfoot, but we had heard of the boogeyman, the monster, and you know, our parents scared us with. This was in 1967. That's when there were more sightings, and that's when I first heard people calling the creatures the furry ones. One evening, my brother was up in a basin area near our home. He was hunting on horseback, and at dusk, he started to head home. But he wanted to look at another area before he did so. He rides up over this ridge, and he said everything happened in a split second. As he came up over the ridge, he saw the horse's ears perk up, and then it stopped moving. A Bigfoot was sitting down there, and he was eating something. It looked up at my brother, and the look on its face was alarming, like it had seen something terrifying. The Bigfoot got down on all fours, leaped four times, and was suddenly gone, like it had vanished into the woods. The horse was so startled, and my brother almost fell off. He grabbed the horse's neck, and they took off, down to the foothills. He said he couldn't stop his horse until they reached home. I also know this old rancher who lived out in the canyon area by the creek. He said that he came home to his trailer late one night. He had an old car sitting along the road to his trailer. He saw something huge, ducked down behind the old car. The rancher then starts panicking. Then this huge creature tried to back out, but the rancher's headlight picked it up. It was really big, but didn't seem too fast, but it did get away. The next day, he found two of his horses lying dead in a nearby gully. Their necks were all ripped out. Their tail end areas were also ripped open. Whatever killed them had to have been pretty fast to catch those horses. My sister lived by the river, and a lot of times their horses were being bothered by something. There would be a bad odor outside also. One night, while their uncle was watching the kids, they said something climbed up on top of the house, and whatever it was, it was big. It was walking around and occasionally jumping. They got really frightened, and their uncle later got them together in the middle of the room. The kids were all crying, and he had his rifle and was aiming it at the door. This creature was jumping hard on the roof. Then my sister came home, and that thing jumped off the house and took off. When she opened the door, they were facing a rifle aimed at them and the kids were hysterical. That same creature would show up several more times, and it always got onto the roof and jumped up and down, scaring everyone. One day, she called my uncle while the creature was there, and he and his friend drove over and saw the creature running away. 
They chased after it in the truck and shot at it a few times. After that, the creature never returned. Thanks for taking the time to read these. Signed, Carter. Number 2. Dear TB, Back in May of 2022, me and a few friends were backpacking in the Appalachian Range of Pennsylvania. We started our trip in George Washington National Forest, Virginia, and eventually ended in Sussex County, New Jersey. Most of the hike was along the Appalachian Trail. We had set up camp in the early afternoon in Pine Grove Furnace State Park near Fuller Lake. We each brought weapons for protection against bears or whatever else may have shown up. Anyway, as they got closer to the evening at around 5 p.m., I was fishing in a creek about a quarter of a mile away from our camp, and I started smelling something really bad. I couldn't describe the odor. It was just awful. I heard some rustling in the bushes about 200 yards away, and it was quite clear that it was footsteps from the sound. Almost thinking that it was one of my friends, I realized that they were south of me, so I started to panic. Whatever it was was getting closer to my fishing spot, and the smell started getting stronger. My fishing pole was in my left hand, and my right hand was on my gun as I was getting ready to unholster it. I just couldn't get over the smell, but at the same time, I was worried about my life. I kept my eyes focused in the direction of the footsteps. I can see a big open area, kind of like a pasture about 50 yards away, which is where the footsteps seem to be coming from. I see what I think is a man in a possible reddish-brown ghillie suit, walking behind the trees around the edge of the open area. But the problem is that it was about two or three feet taller than me, and I'm 6'2", which is pretty unbelievable. None of my friends are close to my height, but that thing that I saw was built. I can see the muscle movement in its legs. Now, I'm no expert on Sasquatch, but I do know that what I saw was no bear, as it was walking easily on two legs. Both the legs and the arms are primitive and built like an oversized gorilla. This thing had to have weighed about 900 pounds. It ended up vanishing as it went to my right into the deeper woods, but after the footsteps stopped, I heard what sounded like chatter, kind of like some sort of native Indian language. After the chatter stops, the footsteps started up again. But it was footsteps going in one direction and another sound of footsteps going in the opposite one. I never told my friends about the experience because I didn't want them thinking that I was crazy. Some people might be skeptical about this, but I know what I heard and what I saw and heard wasn't out of the ordinary. Thanks. Signed. Sammy. Number three. Dear TB, I have something to share. I was off once to do some winter camping. It was late February of 2009, I believe, and there was no one around to be seen. We got there and started setting up camp, and this was around 1 p.m. I heard what we assumed was an elk bugle off in the distance, so... I cracked some huge rock to semi-replicate gunshots, just to basically let the local wildlife know I was there and then continued to settle in. Over the next few hours, the bugle sound got closer and closer, and at first my dog was running free without a care in the world. My dog had treed mountain lions and run off bears, and he was pretty fearless. The sounds got closer and closer, and got to a point where it sounded like about 20 yards away or so. At my best guess, it would call about every 30 to 45 minutes. My dog stopped running like he was and started circling, only the immediate campsite. After a few hours of this, it started to sound like a multi-pitched whistle, almost like a wooden train whistle is the best way I can describe it. By around 6.30 p.m., it would call, and about 15 minutes later, there would be a reply from about the equal distance on the opposite side of us, and it went on a whistle back and forth. By 11, there were at least 
five different calls around our camp, all similar sounding but distinctly different and unique. That was when we started to record audio, which didn't come out worth anything. At this point, my dog was acting a bit skittish and wouldn't venture more than 15 feet from the truck, and with its tail kind of tucked, which was very out of character for him. I started to feel a bit unsettled, and around midnight I started my truck and started loading up my stuff because I had a deep gut feeling that something was about to happen. I just couldn't shake it, so I got the dog and girlfriend in the truck while I was packing. Suddenly, out of nowhere, this loud crunching sound came, and then through the air, a log came flying from the direction of one of the whistles. It was a big log, like 8 to 10 inches in diameter, and maybe six feet long. Far too big for a human to have thrown. The way this thing flew, it smashed the back window of my forerunner and dented the side panel around the window pretty bad. Whatever it was, threw it with extreme force. Needless to say, I was quickly in the driver's seat. We got out of there and drove two hours home non-stop. I was completely terrified. I left half of my supplies back at the camp and never looked back, and I still haven't returned to this very day. This all took place at Sullivan Lake and Colville National Forest in Washington State. If you know the area, it's known as a pretty wild area to the locals. You know not to tent camp and bring heavy artillery, which I only learned years later. Anyway, I later let a group of rangers hear my terrible audio and told them the story of what had happened. And three of the four tried to tell me that it was a screech owl, or it was this or that. But the one ranger in particular kind of went pale and stayed quiet. When the other three left and got into their rigs, he took me aside and he told me that I can't tell you what I think it was, but I will say that you're very lucky to have gotten out of there. He also saw the side of my forerunner, which I had taped over the broken window, sitting in the parking lot. Thanks for reading. Signed, Rob. Number four. Hey, Tattooed Biker. I remember when I was seven or eight, I used to love to watch In Search Of, with narrator Leonard Nimoy. Shows like that sort of died out and lost ratings, I guess, and as I got older, I watched Ancient Aliens. And eventually, I had my own first experience coming back from a card game. I came to a stop sign after I crossed the bridge, going over the highway off exit 112 in the lower part of the Catskills, outside of Monticello, New York, when something caught my eye. I looked up, and there was a huge UFO. It just cleared the treetops and went over the road the same height as the treetops and was moving very, very slowly. I got out of my truck and watched it as it headed for the highway I'd just crossed. Cars were zooming by and they had to have seen it. It was headed in the direction of Montemoros, Pennsylvania. I remember saying in my head, where are you going? Come back. And at the time, I knew nothing about mind speak and telepathy, so I had no reason to think they heard me. I went home and didn't hesitate to tell my dad and stepmother. My dad was excited for me and asked if I had a missing time experience, and I said no. He then said Bonnie, who was my stepmom, had seen one in Carmel, New York, about the size of a football field. I eventually met someone married her, and moved to Pulaski, New York, and that was in July of 2009. Around May of 2019, I was bored and decided to do some YouTube searching for Sasquatch stories. I came across a video titled Sasquatch Speaks. I was so fascinated with that video and that I put it on every day after work for three straight days. The first speaker was a Native American and he said that 12 years ago that Sasquatch was going to start going out and talking to people, and they were going to be very picky choosing who they talked to, that they have to have a certain spiritual vibration and a respect for life. He also said they have to be spiritual enough to handle the Sasquatch, 
meaning the mental telepathy experience and communication. I turned off the TV set and headed out the door to Happy Valley in Parish, New York. From the time I got in my car and drove to the location, which was state land, and I had my experience right away as I got out of the car. Keep in mind that I just drove a mile on a dirt road leading to the spot. Well, I heard a howl, and it was just a few feet away. There was no wolf to be seen, so I knew that it was a Sasquatch that was invisible because they are interdimensional beings. I went over to my left in the woods and saw a classic tree break. It looked fresh because it had fresh leaves on the shoots coming out of the sapling. That tree was about three inches thick, and it was broken about ten feet up. All of a sudden, I was hit with a massive amount of energy that made me feel high like I was stoned. I was suddenly enlightened. I felt so good that I actually started to sing. I made it back to my car and drove home and I felt that the Sasquatch was still present, so I was talking to him or her. I got home and didn't say anything to my wife and then just went into the house. Later, on the way back from Walmart, I got off on Route 81 and went up the road that I must have been the first car to drive up. There had been an accident. Two ambulances and a state trooper were sitting there. I recognized some guys standing there, wearing Wicked Ways motorbike club jackets. Now keep in mind, I'm still high from the Sasquatch mojo. So I said to the Sasquatch, still in my head, let's go investigate. I walked up and I knew one biker, and I asked what had happened. He replied that some jerk had pulled out in front of him with a zero-turn mower. I looked over and saw their friend standing, leaning against his bike with the EMT examining him. There was blood coming from his ear, and I noticed a small puddle of blood on the road. I remembered from the Sasquatch Speaks video that if you ask the Sasquatch for healing, they will. They are our elders, brothers, and sisters. I asked the biker what his friend's name was, and he replied, Zach. So, in my mind, I asked the Sasquatch if he would heal Zach. A moment later, Zach said, Do I really have to go to the hospital? The EMT replied, yes, you have brain trauma. I knew intuitively that the Sasquatch had done just that, and I said thank you. I caught up with Zach about two months later, and I saw his left arm in a sling. He said that he had healed quickly and only suffered a broken collarbone. Two months went by, and I was having the time of my life with this new experience. I was lying on the couch when I heard a knock at the window. I looked and saw my wife was on the phone. She didn't hear it. At the time, I smoked cigarettes, so I told her I was stepping outside for a smoke. I looked over in the woods, and I saw Sasquatch figures standing there at the wood line, but they were glowing green, kind of like Space Ghost. If you saw that cartoon growing up is the best way to explain what I witnessed. I went up my walk, and around the shed and walked up the steps to my pool deck. The pool was about 22 feet across and 54 inches to the rail, and my pool deck railing was 36 inches tall. I was looking in the woods when I saw a glowing Sasquatch, but he was halfway through the tree. I said, you can come closer, it's okay. And then he walked over to me, and another followed behind him, a female carrying an infant. He was three feet from me now, but I was above his head. So I said hello and said automatically, don't trust the government. He seemed to be uneasy about that, so I changed the subject. The male had a primate face, but I couldn't make hers out. She was always looking down at her kid. They both had lead white eyes, and the kid's eyes were red. I said, oh, he's so cute. I didn't know what else to say since they weren't saying anything, so I said, Well, I'm going in now. Bye and thank you. And then I just went back down the stairs, and that was the end of the encounter. I'll send more experiences as I have them. Signed, Pete. And there it is. All I have for tonight. I'd love to hear your thoughts about these in the comments down below. 
And just a reminder that Kitty from Pinebox Tales is moving her channel over to Pinebox Mysteries and will be posting there going forward. I'll be sure to leave a link to her new channel down in the pinned comment. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. And as always, stay curious, stay vigilant, stay safe, and I'll be seeing you on down the road a ways. Biker, out.